Go ahead. Okay, you you can share your screen now if you wish. Yes, I will. Just yeah, one second. Exactly. Thank you very much, Dr. Blant and uh, Professor Mahir Al Nasri, and welcome everyone. Hello and welcome to this event. In this event, uh, we will be introduce you our program. And this event, first of all, is organized by Knightsbridge Academy, based in London and the College of Medicine and Dentistry based in Birmingham, England. In this event, we will be presenting you a tailored program for medical professionals who want to live and work in the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is reaching a crisis point where there is currently more than 50,000 shortage of general practitioners as well as hospital doctors. The demand is huge for doctors in the UK. To help fulfill this gap, the College of Medicine and Dentistry has developed a program with structured pathway on how to live and work in the United Kingdom as a doctor. Knightsbridge Academy is an expert in dental and medical postgraduate education, was established in, Lo in London in 2010. As a learning provider, Knightsbridge Academy has conducted hundreds of training seminars and conferences for doctors, dentists, and their assistants around the world, especially in London, Istanbul, Vienna, Dubai, and Baku. Knightsbridge Academy is one of the most experienced academies that organize cadaveric courses around the world. And the College of Medicine and Dentistry established in 2018, one of the few private education providers offering a wide range of training programs for the dental team and all healthcare professionals. Having grown to a multinational alumni and a student body of over 500 graduates, the College of Medicine and Dentistry traces its beginnings with the BPP University School of Health, which in 2013 became the first private university in the UK to deliver postgraduate clinical dentistry programs. The college has since been established as an independent college in 2018, working with the University of Ulster, Northern Ireland, and is continuing its drive and vision to become a leading independent research and innovation institution committed to excellence in healthcare, education, and training. The College of Medicine and Dentistry has a 7,600 square feet campus in central Birmingham with a state-of-the-art simulation center and clinical facilities for students as well as patients. Now, I would like to introduce you Professor Maher El Masri, who is Dean of the College of Medicine and Dentistry. After completing a degree in dental surgery from Damascus University in 1995, Maher pursued a career in oral surgery at the Royal London Hospitals in London until 2003. He had an intensive year-long implant dentistry training at the Katharinen Hospital in Stuttgart, Germany, as an international scholar. He graduated with a master's and doctorate degree from Barts and the London School of Medicine and Dentistry, wherein he researched tissue regeneration and engineering. He developed an interest in surgical education and started a pioneering cadaveric model for training dentists in a safe and effective manner. In 2013, Mahir founded and led BPP University's Faculty of Dentistry, which became one of the largest postgraduate dentistry department in the United Kingdom. And he played a significant role in reforming dental private higher education in the United Kingdom. In parallel, he earned his MBA degree in higher education management from University College London. In addition, 
He has been actively involved in the development and support of research activities on an international level, including Austria, China, Egypt, Greece, Iran, Iraq, Italy, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Syria, and the United Arab Emirates. Mahir Al Masri received an honorary professorship from Barry University in Italy and full professorship title from BPP University. Professor Mahir Al Masri, Dean of the College of Medicine and Dentistry. Please, uh, Professor Mahir. Thank you very much, Jakob. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the introduction. Um, Bolent, I hope you're well. Mustafa, I hope you're great. Um, um, looking forward to meeting uh, you in Istanbul next, uh, um, well, in, in three weeks' time, hopefully. Exactly. Things don't change. Um, right. Hello, everyone. Okay. can see a good number of attendees that they exceed the 100 people in the room. Um, I will be talking to you in the next hour about uh, the shortage we have in the UK for medical professionals, so doctors, whether that's in, in hospital uh, provision or in the GP practice, so in general practice, as general practitioners in, in, um, in general practitioner clinics. And the pathway that we have created to uh, to, to lead somebody who works or who's basically who lives in in somewhere in the world, whether that's in Turkey or in India or in Korea or in Brazil or Nigeria, wherever in the world, a pathway to lead uh, to lead him or to take him from wherever he is to practice within one year to practice medicine in the United Kingdom in in the UK. Um, and that's what I will be talking about in the next uh, hour or so. Uh, I can see that the number of uh, candidates is increasing. So do you recommend I wait a little bit, Bolent or Mustafa or Jakub, or shall I continue? Uh, actually, we should continue. My, uh, okay. I, I am recording everything, so we will publish later. They will be able to see it later. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Right. Okay. So I will, uh, I'll change the slides. I mean, that's myself. My name is Mahar Al-Masri. I'm a... Uh, by qualification, I have a dental qualification. I've done uh, oral surgery training for a good 14 years, uh, training and jobs in hospitals. And then um, I, I have a MSc degree, I have a PhD degree, I have an MBA degree in higher education management and all from London. Um, we, we, who we are as a college, uh, we are the first and only private institution to teach postgraduate medicine and dentistry in the UK. We started in 2013. We have a fantastic state-of-art facilities in central Birmingham that is uh, second to none and uh, nothing like it in the UK. We deliver education um, that is very much student-centered and um, is heavily relying on quality, on high quality. And we do check this by regular quality assurance. Um, and we do uh, enhance the process, the, all the processes that seek to support excellent quality within teaching, learning, and the student experience. We started with 10 programs and we are expanding and we diversifying. And we have always maintained the vision to be the global leader of education. That global leader of education that is very much dedicated to the profession. So it's not only, we don't only give a degree, we deliver education and training that make you professional person working in a professional environment somewhere, whether that's in a dental practice or in the hospital as a doctor or in a, in a GP practice as a doctor or as a specialist. And that's our vision. Obviously, the mission is, uh, is supports our vision, and our mission is to um, provide a promise, and we are pioneers in delivering practical knowledge. So that's practical and clinical, and that's what you doctors and dentists need. Um, can I ask a question, uh, Jakob, Bolent, Mustafa? 
are we talking all doctors in the room? We don't have dentists, aren't we? Or we might have few dentists in the room. Just a question. Um, actually, we are expecting uh, all of them uh, as medical doctors. Okay, thank but, you very uh, much. But it can be some dentists in, in the room. Okay. So we cannot be sure. Yes, we we not we not racist. We like doctors and we like <laughs> dentists. All right, so exactly. dent, dentists in the room are welcome as well. You might have a brother, you might have a wife, you might have a, a relative who's a doctor. Please join us. In a way, we were successful in delivering the same uh, scheme for dentists, and we are diversifying now. We're moving towards doctors in a very well structured strategy. So uncompromised excellence, it does um, basically make all, all senses that in, um, um, can, can you see my screen fully? Can you see the full screen? Uh, no, uh, we, we, we can see all your presentation, all other uh, slides. So, not, so you, can, you don't not, see the full, not, not full screen? The full screen. No. Okay, no, hold on one second. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I'll try to, to, to match it then. Yeah, okay, you can see only one slide. You right? can see it now, can you? Uh, yeah. So, and if I do this, uh, uh, what can you they, see? They, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, we can see all of them now again. So, all of them Changed. again. Okay, yeah, yeah. no, just yeah. one second then. Yeah. I have to stop share and share again. So yeah. give me a second, please. Yeah, Sorry, sure. Ap apologies. Mm -hmm. No problem. Is it all of it, all of it again? Uh, yeah, all of them again. Okay. What about now? Yeah, exactly right. So that's that's good. So we talk, yeah. So you you see one big slide. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, so uh, um, again, I, I will say we promise that we provide practical knowledge and skills, which is needed to create your career, and stay competitive, in in a work environment. And we're talking now about working in a work environment in the UK. Excellence is number one, innovation is number two, and developing your leadership skills is number three. So that's really, really crucial in working in the UK. So excellence, innovation, and leadership. And we do provide all of this. Let me talk a little bit about our statistics. So 97% of our teaching staff, at least, they have at least a master's degree or a professional qualification. I mean, uh, th that slide is a little bit dated now. We're talking about 30 countries across the globe. We doubled that number recently. So we are over 60, 60 countries uh, across the globe. So our students, they come from 60 countries internationally. Um, in 2019, we reached to over 80% of dental professionals in the UK. Until now, we have graduated over 300 MSc students. In 2019, we graduated over 100 dentists to the profession. We brought them to the profession to work uh, in the profession. And now we have over 150 people with preparing them as well to work in the profession. We delivered education to over 100 dental care professionals. And since inception, we communicated with over 200,000 people, um, prof professionals, healthcare professionals across the globe, so internationally. So that's a, a lots of people actually we communicated and, and uh, supported. Um, internationalization is one of our key points, and uh, we will evolve into truly global organization. We maintain and grow in the UK uh, by having a big market share and investing in the key growth areas. 
um, we have big online solution for all the issues that we have. Um, w w w it came up recently, especially during the pandemic. We continue to teach despite that many of dental medical schools stopped educating, stopped teaching, stopped delivering education. We do have business to business context with lots of organizations and we deliver educations to their staff and their uh, medical professionals and dental professionals. We cover education from CPD to professional diploma to MSc and PhDs and we are the only a provider in the UK that we are the only institution in the UK that delivers PhD programs on a private basis. That's a solution that has not been uh, offered by any other educator in the UK. And one of one of the important areas in our uh, basically character and our uh, strategy is support the career of our students and graduates, and we always commit to enable and enhance the careers of our graduates. So we talk to the graduates before they join us, what they want to do, where they want to be in five years time, and we do enhance their career, that we support them at each stage and we communicate with them afterwards and see if they, if they met and they fulfilled the aspirations that they had uh, originally. And then finally, we like to diversify we, and, and deliver education in all healthcare sectors, from dentistry to medicine, to pharmacology, to pharmacy, regulatory affairs, and um, psychology and uh, uh, aesthetics, etc., in healthcare professionals and healthcare sector. One of our uh, main um, uh, characteristics is professionals teaching professionals, and we pride ourselves uh, and uh, that all our professionals um, all our teachers or professionals doing the work on regular basis, so they're not only uh, academicians, they are professionals doing the work, basically. Um, outstanding education experience, and that's not by our uh, feedback, it's the feedback of our graduates, the feedback of our students. They talk to, to us and they tell us that this is the best education that you might have. We're very much, very much innovative in the way we deliver education. And it's not about the knowledge itself, it's about how to deliver that knowledge, how to make the student or the doctor or the dentist or the colleague or the peer or the person basically receive the information, comprehend the information and act upon that information in a good way. And we're the only institution that focus on leadership. So in, in any healthcare sector, the medical and dental professional that we're talking about, he's not only involved in doing a clinical work to that patient, he's involved also in leading a big healthcare, healthcare organization from nurses to receptionists to healthcare professionals to lab workers, to managers, to administrators, etc. And leadership comes really, really crucial. And many of the doctors and dentists in the UK who have extremely high level of uh, competency in clinical skills, but they fail in the management and leadership skills and they get problems in managing patients' expectations and managing workers who work with them and managing the team. And that comes to their education basically initially they did not receive education in leadership and management and we deliver that as part of um, their ed course or program and then finally we are very much close to employers we talk the language we speak the language of the employers we know what they want and we continue to provide excellent services to the clients we consider the employer as a client, we consider that we're providing the, the, the employer the, what he wants in terms of, so if, it's a, if it is the NHS, National Health Sector in the UK, National Health System, we talk their language, we know what they want, we provide them with what they want in terms of um, uh, competency and skill in the doctors and dentists that, they, that we, we, we graduate. And we work in that 
We have provided lots of success stories to our students and our students. I mean, that's um, a student AK, for example, I'm not gonna mention the name. He has an, he, he just received his degree uh, MSc in advanced general practice. Uh, in, he started in January 21, just was finished it in December. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, uh, he, he is currently in part-time employment. So he started two months ago doing part-time employment in one of the clinical provisions. And he, before he, he came in so uh, to see me earlier, he said, um, Professor Al Masri, before coming to the UK, that's less than a year ago, I was doing work in a practice in Cairo, receiving what is equivalent to 10 pounds per day. So that's 300 pounds. And in fact, it's less than 300 pounds say 250 pounds per month. That was his income in Egypt. And now within less than a year, he's, he received a job on part-time basis. He only, he's only doing two days per month, uh, two days per week, because he's still studying and finishing his dissertation. And he's receiving 400 pounds per day. So that's 800 pounds per week. That's 3,200 pounds per month. It's a big jump from uh, 250 pounds per month to 3,200 pounds per month. It's a big jump. And that's the one success story. We have loads of other success stories. I was talking to some of the students today who just uh, uh, finished the course. We're celebrating their success. Uh, we're celebrating their graduation in January in a big party. Some of them from Nepal, India, Pakistan, Syria, um, just name it. I mean, yes, we have lots of uh, students who come from India and Pakistan, but that's how the Commonwealth countries and Commonwealth um, basically uh, agreement happened that they come from the Indian and, sub, so, and Indian subcontinents basically to, to the UK. And they are very competent and they know what they want and they come to us. And the many of them, they are in jobs now within less than one year because they focused, we know how to deliver what they wanted. They focused their journey, they focused their aim and they achieved and they are now in jobs, part-time jobs, yes, but um, upon finishing the program, they will be able to do full-time jobs. So our uh, um, facilities in central Birmingham is a state of the art. This is the student breakout area. Um, um, we have lots of other facilities for the medicine, including SimMan and models, etc., and lots of facilities for dentists as well. But why did we diversify into medicine now? I mean, we started in 2013 in the dentist, uh, dentistry journey, dentistry division, but we diversified recently into medicine because of the big shortage of medical doctors and medical professionals in the UK. There's a huge shortage. It's a big crisis. UK healthcare um, uh, workforce, it has, uh, there's a big demand, um, especially after Brexit, especially after COVID. Many of the doctors, they left the profession, they just want to have an easier life, they don't want the high risk, they don't want to uh, basically uh, continue this profession, they want to, after Brexit, leave, go back home, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, America, because they have a partner who is European, or, or for any other reason. So we lost about 20% of the doctors in the UK because of Brexit. We also, because of the COVID, the, we lost a number of the older healthcare professionals because of the risk that they might encounter. And they left because they have other uh, revenue stream, um, whether that's investment, properties, uh, trade, etc., any other business. And but so they're not seeing patients anymore. So uh, in 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 uh, in conclusion the ratio that we have currently is 2.8 per 1000 and in europe anywhere in europe the average is 3.7 doctors per 1000 so there's a big shortage in here and um in 2043 the uk government is aiming to increase the number from 26 or 27,000 to 83,000 doctors, full-time equivalent doctors. I know it's 20 years from now, 
But that jump of probably uh, 45,000 doctors is a huge jump. And to rely only on the graduates from UK medical schools, that is an impossible task. And that's one, that's why we are uh, moving towards a recruitment of overseas doctors to come to the UK. So it's a huge shortage, acute crisis. We need to resolve it. We know that there are lots of doctors, many of them thousands in the graduates everywhere in the world that they are interested to come and work in the UK because of a number of reasons, commercial, quality of life, uh, learning the, the skills, etc. any other reason. And um, the organization that is called OECD, which is international organization that works to build better policies for better life, is talking about this at all times. The UK has one of the highest level of overseas doctors in these countries. So they, we know that the UK is heavily relying on international doctors. We know this. It's evident. If you go to London, for example, over 50% of the doctors, they're not originally from the UK. So there's a big rationale, big reason to recruit doctors who train somewhere else, come and work in the UK, come and train and then work in the UK. So um, one in every three secondary care doctors in England alone are international. UK has one of the highest levels of overseas doctors in the organization that I mentioned. International recruitment has been and will remain an es essential pipeline for medical staffing in the NHS. So that's, that's statistics. We're talking about what is basically drawing us to the pool of doctors. What we, what we, what we want to, from you guys is to bring you to as a workforce, supporting the workforce planning assessment that happens in the government in the UK. Whether that is in the private sector or that is in the... Um, NHS sector. So regardless, there is a chronic undersupplies of doctor. It's not only acute, but, and it's been for a long time, but now the, it is an acute problem. Not only in the NHS, but also in the private, and that is evident in the independent healthcare providers' publications. Because the shortage in the NHS will refer to shortage in the, in, in the, in the private sector. For this purpose, we created two schemes. The first scheme is a, a short program that is six months. It's called Life and Work in the UK for Doctors. And the second one is a longer program. It's a one year full time and it's a master's degree. So people who finish that program, they will receive a master's degree. The short one, it's a diploma level, six months full time. The second one, it's a full MSc degree in advanced general medical practice. So let me talk about the first one, the life and work in the UK for doctors. The aim for this is to establish a career for you in the UK as a doctor. We provide you with a short-term visa for six months. We tell you all about the issues on living in the UK, not only medically, but also culture, medical legal, professionalism, the governance, how to communicate with patients. What do the patient want from you? And how to deal with that complaint from the patient. So if the patient comes to you and say, I have, an, I have a medical problem, how to deal with this according to the UK culture? Because many of the issues are not related to medical, medical issue. It's related to cultural issue. It's related to psychological issue. And you need to be protected in a way and protection, it will keep you registered in the General Medical Council. If you're not protected, you lose your registration because much of the practices are about professionalism and how to communicate with patients. It's not about your knowledge and skill in diagnosis and treatment of a disease. 
Within the six months, we have a focused tuition on PLAB. That's the examination to register in the GMC. And we know that this PLAB exam, not like dentistry exams, PLAB exam, it happens every month in Manchester. So we prepare you to sit the exam. We prepare you to finish the exam. Obviously, this is an exam. So it, your skill and your ability and your comprehension of, the, of these topics is very crucial to pass the exam. But we will provide you with all the ingredients. We provide you with all the materials and all the reasons for you to complete that exam successfully. We also provide you with the English requirements to pass that exam. So that includes English teaching. We, we introduce you to the UK clinical and medical practice, whether that is in hospital or in the GP provision. And we provide you with education and experience and role play scenarios and all the um, the expertise you need to get a job. And when you finish the PLAB exam, we, we guarantee you a job within less than six months. So basically, if you start with us in January, within one year, you will be in a job if you finish the PLAB exam. So that's a, a guaranteed opportunity for you if you join the program. Whether that is in hospital setting or in uh, GP setting in a medical practice setting. That includes job interviewing and job interviews, skills, etc. The second provision I'm talking about is an MSc in advanced general medical practice, which in, at the same time you study the PLAB, you study advanced general medicine, you earn an MSc degree because you do all the assessments require, required to take an MSc degree. All the training that you need to pass the lab, and we lead you to registration in the GMC, including English, uh, English teaching. We lead you to get registration in the GMC. Obviously, that's an exam, the PLAB exam. So your skills and comprehension is required, but we provide you with all the ingredients for this. And when you get registered, we guarantee your job after registration. In addition to all of this, when you get the advanced in the medical practice, uh, MSc, you get a two year work permit from the UK government. Uh, so you get work permit from, from hospitals and or GPs in, in the UK for two years at least. And that's a gift from the UK government for you to study in the UK. We introduce you to the UK workforce and we introduce you as a medical practitioner in a GP or a hospital and how to live and work and uh, interact in the UK culture as a medical professional. And that is a prospect for a career as a doctor in the UK within a one full-time year. So the mod both programs are modular, very similar in the context, very similar in the structure, life in the, and work in the UK. A six month program has a number of modules from basic sciences, <clears throat> biomaterials, health promotion, examination, diagnosis, treatment, clinical skills, especially how to treat patients in the NHS, clinical governance, management and administration, and how to do it in the UK and English language. And if you want to do the full MSc within one full year, it's exactly the same modules, but we add to it research modules that you need to do to get an MSc degree over one full year. And we provide you with all the required mentorship in the GMC, um, basically in the application form and completion of the mapping exercise, et cetera, for the GMC registration. And we provide you with the training to set um, the, uh, the, the English language requirements or English language exams. IELTS is one of them. OET is another one, that's occupational examination occupational uh, English test certificate or primary medical uh, uh, qualification if, if, if you were taught in English back home. And if you have got that, then that might make your life easier. But we support you in all of this. So your career, if you are a GP or if you work in a medical practice and it's different career than you work in hospitals, very similar, but different. So hospital doctors, they need to do internal medicine training. And that's a core level training for the 
for all specialties from cardiology to gastro, nephrology, etc. And a trainee rotates through various specialties and achieves the competencies of becoming a medical registrar, which is a tough route, but you'll be working, you'll be receiving good salary if you're doing that job as an internal medical trainee. And then after you're finishing the IMT, you can select one specialty and go in that specialty, a particular medical specialty, whether that's cardiology to uh, endocrinology to gastro nephrology, et cetera, et cetera. And um, the, the first one is it takes three years. The, there's another scheme that it takes two years. That's allergy, audiovascular medicine, aviation medicine, clinical genetics, et cetera. And so they, there's a well-defined pathway for each of them or for this, for, for the medical group one medical specialties or group two medical specialties. Hospital doctors, it leads to specialty training in internal medicine. Um, there is a, obviously criteria and eligibility and you need to fulfill this and we support you in all of this. You need to have evidence of achievement of foundation competencies. But if you have done any work back home, we can support you to make this count when you come to the UK. So 12 months medical experience after the GMC registration or equivalent before. So if you have a 12 month in Turkey, we can support you to make this count towards basically um, the training before you join the IMT. So your medical experience back in Turkey or anywhere in the world will basically count it. Specialty tra training is not a race. That's really important note. We don't make you race in this. We'd like you to take your time. We'd like you to grow into, into this very steadily. You should be able to participate in all aspects of your career advancement as you work in the NHS. It's the largest employer in the world. The NHS is the largest employer in the world. And you will be becoming part of this. So if you look at the selection criteria for any uh, entry to the IMT, Internal Medical Training Program, you would need to have clinical skills. But that's not all. You need to have academic skills from research and teaching and presentations. And you need to have personal skills from communication, management and leadership, team involvement, organization and planning, and recognize the values of people talk about property, commitment to the specialty. So that, so clinical skills is one of all of this and they will, to get registered, they will assess you on all of this. And that's what we teach you on. So we do not only teach you medical stuff. We teach you how to work and how to practice in the UK. We teach you communication, management, leadership, personal skills, property, commitment to specialty, research, teaching, presentation, clinical skills. It's a full program, very busy full program to make you uh, all rounded in this. So again, it's not a race, you should grow steadily. So IMT for two to three years, and then there's an exam of MRCP, eligibility and recruitment for specialist registrar, three or four, and then ST3, ST4, special training, and then you become a specialist and you become a consultant in NHS if you want to. That's a hospital career. If you want to take an, a general practice career, there's a similar pathway, and but, but it's, it's in the general practice training, ST1. You need to have GMC, obviously, which we will lead you to it. And then you need to do uh, basically um, uh, a GP training. And the GP training, it has requirements. Again, you need to have a, um, uh, some sort of experience. Um, uh, uh, your experience back home in Turkey or somewhere, it will count. And um, oh, it, it's preferable if you have a driving license. And if you don't, we'll, tr we'll lead you to people who can train you on this and they're available everywhere. 
but that's really important. Current employment in the GMC approved specialty training program holding either a national training number or deanery reference. And we, we will put all of this in the one context for you to take and to put, prepare you for general practice. Again, for in the general practice, you need the personal skills, communication skills, conceptual thinking and problem solving, empathy and sensitivity. You need to provide all of these skills. And the OSCE examination it's an OSCE examination in the in the um, in the PLAB exam. It's based on all of those matters. It's not only about your clinical knowledge and clinical skills. It's about all of these matters. You will have a patient sitting there, and you need to interact with the patient, showing um, basically your exceptional communication skills. You need to show empathy and sensitivity. You need to show commitment to the specialty. The same matters. So pay scale for junior doctors. Um, junior doctors, they have a well-defined pay scale. They starts from 40,000 pounds almost and can go up to 54,000 pounds per, per, per year, which is not a bad uh, pay, payment for doctors in the UK. And that's if you're working on the 40 hours per week. And if you go higher than this, um, you can basically, uh, as a specialist registrar, uh, when you finish your IMT and go into specialist registrar, you can start with the 50,000 pounds and it can go up to 70,000 pounds. It depends on the number of hours and if you add to this the weekend allowance for example if you're doing one and two weekends as an on-call you receive seven thousand five hundred pounds per year addition to your salary and the more you uh, you get experience the more money you get and um there's another salary scale which starts from 56,000 pounds for the senior registrar. So that's specialist registrar in six to eight level, six to eight. So year six and year to year eight in your training. After you'd finished, the, uh, including the IMT, and you, if you re start with a year six, you can start with 56 and then you can go up to 77,000 pounds. Needless to say that if you are a consultant, you start with seventy-seven thousand pounds per year, and you can go up to one hundred and seven thousand pounds. And if you're doing private work, you can receive as much as you basically do in a private est establishment. So let me re-emphasize that we have a one program called Life and Work in the UK for Doctors that is a starting in February twenty-two. Uh, we acutely need people to register in this program because we are waiting for them to come and work in the UK. It takes you in a journey to establish a career in the UK as doctors. We give you with a UK visa for six months to come and study this. We teach you how to live in the UK from all aspects, pro professionalism, focused tuition towards the PLAB exam to, until you finish that, including English language tuition, introduce you to the UK practice. We teach you a lot about how to get a job, including job interviews. And we provide you when you register in the GMC with a guaranteed job offer. The fee for this course is 15,000 pounds over six months, which can be paid into installment. However, the MSc is a Another course, and we're taking expression of interest now for September 22, in which you study uh, the advanced medicine. You, again, and saying the, the important points, you earn an MSc in a specialty, MSc in, in that area, which is advanced medicine. You get a focused training on the PLAB. You register in the, image, in the GMC after you complete the PLAB exam you are getting a guaranteed job after registration, get a work visa for two years after your course, again, introduce you to UK work and life as a medical doctor, and this is a prospect for you. So that's my email address. I'm finishing with these slides. I would like you to ask us questions and I will be happily answering these questions. I know I have uh, with me in the room, 
um, a number of my team members. I'd like to welcome Dr. Patrice Baptist, who is um, a GP trainer, one of our senior clinical lecturers in uh, general medical practice, a, a very senior person in how to uh, develop your career. And she established her own portfolio of uh, programs and courses to uh, enhance the career of a, a medical practitioner in the UK. Duly qualified um, in medicine and speech therapy, uh, based in London, has lots of followers in so on social media, and she delivered education to hundreds of medical practitioners. Uh, Patrice is with me online, and I have uh, also um, one of our my team members, Miss pa Pam Jaff, who is uh, our, our uh, onboarding and admission manager, who will be able to talk to you about admission process as well. Back to you, Jakub Boland Mustafa. If you have uh, questions, please, I'm happy to answer. Uh, thank you for your speech, Maher. Uh, in the chat box, there are a few uh, questions. So um, if you can check, or maybe Pam Hello. chooses some of them. No problem. Um, so I've gone through some of the questions, but we'll go through some of them on here already. So I'm currently studying a PhD program in a Turkey university. If I come to the UK, is my PhD degree recognized there? And I believe the rest is in Turkish, if I know I can translate. Let me just have a look. You can answer this question after the program if you wish. Yeah, I mean, PhD degree will count if you want to go into medical, uh, into academic uh, programs. Yes, it will count. If you're a specialist, we will see how that will will be translated. I mean, you would work as a, in, in the provision of your specialty here because there's a big shortage and people, they, they would like you to be. Um, they would like to work in your specialty area. We've got, my wife is a nuclear medicine specialist in Turkey. Is it different to a speciality from the radiology in the UK? Say, say the question again. My wife is a nuclear medicine specialist in Turkey. Is it different speciality from the radiology in the UK? Um, I, I'm not sure of this. Maybe. Dr. Patrice. Patrice, do you know this? Is it a nuclear medicine? Is it a specialty in the UK? Is it radiology or is it uh, oncology? I mean... Um, there is a training program for radiology, which is five years after the foundation program. Um, what was it? Was it nuclear medicine? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a bit more academic. I'm not sure that's um, more of like a, a clinical specialty. Um but definitely radiology would be separate, would be different. That's fine. We can always uh, research this and always get back to them at the end of the uh, webinar as well. We've got another question here. Um, if I have experience of four years residency, residency of terminology or internal medicine in Turkey, can I start from ST3 level? I, uh, that's that's really difficult to answer now. Okay. Um, I mean, it will be depend a case by case. Uh, correct me, Patrice, if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, like I think the last question we had, um, it does it is on an individual basis, and there's a few things they have to take into consideration. Um, I think they would need a bit more information as to kind of what you covered in the residency. Um, so that just to make sure that you're up to par with the training um, and what the competencies in the UK. 
Does the fee contain accommodation or any expenses are required? So the fees for the programs themselves are just for the fees. For accommodation, we do aid you with finding accommodation, but that's all an additional cost, which we can go through with you. We can help you go through some local providers nearby to see what's nearby. Or if you wanted to find your own, there's a lot available online as well. After I become GMC certified doctor and practicing foundation year two, does my situation provide my wife, who is a dentist, to choose her Obligate foundation degree training location in the same? Oh, where's that question gone? These are coming in quite quick now. Yeah, we've lost that one now. Okay, is my 12 month emergency medicine experience as a general practitioner in Turkey accountable in England? Uh, Patrice, do you know? Sorry, can you just repeat that? Sorry. Yeah, is my 12 month emergency medicine experience as a general practitioner in Turkey accountable in England? Accountable or do you mean it's uh, is the I think the question I'd be asking is it applicable or, or I'm guessing it, so it yeah relevant yeah um so training in emergency medicine will will be beneficial um if you are looking to be a general practitioner uh whether it comes to reducing time in terms of training is a different uh question because like we said it, it does depend on the individual basis um but if you have experience it might potentially be considered and it definitely will help anyway. Uh, if, if you want to work here as a, as a GP in the UK. I hope that answers the question. I hope so too. Uh, if we are already a specialist in another country, past PLAB and did one year of FY2, do we have to do two years? Wow, these questions are going quick. Do we have to do two years in core training in order to start training for specialism? I'm trying to look, I'm actually trying to see the questions in the, the chat. Question, yeah, I, um, <laughs> they are going very quickly. <laughs> um, where did you find that one? Can you just repeat that, please? Yeah, Sorry. that was come right at the end. So if we are already a specialist in another country, oh, passed okay. PLAB and did one year of FY2, do we have to do two years in core training in order to start training for a specialism? Oh, I see. OK, so I think the answer for that is yes, because um, if you want to specialize, you have to do core training no matter what you want to do. So whether you want to be a surgeon or a physician, you still have to do core medical um, training. I would say, though, like we said last time, if you are a specialist, um, you know, every you have to assess it on in each case. But the GMC will, does allow you to potentially um, be entered onto the specialist register, but you obviously have to meet certain criteria. So there are you know, people, doctors who are specialists in their country and they're able to just transfer straight onto the specialty register over here. Um, but like I said, it, you know, you have to make an application and see what the GMC says. It's really up to them and they assess the whole application. Definitely. I mean, we're getting quite a few questions in terms of uh, I'm a neurologist as a professor. I wonder if I could work in the UK as a neurologist. Would that be another one that we'd have to assess case by case or is that something that they can do directly? I'm still trying to find the question, but like I said, if you are a specialist, um, there is um, a way where you can uh, be entered into the specialist register here, uh, whether that's a you know, the GP um, or as a consultant, but it, it does depend. You have to make an application. So it's difficult to, to give a straight answer because um, there are a lot of different factors. Uh, sometimes if you are a specialist, you do have to go through the training pathway and essentially kind of start um, from the basics and the ground up. But in some cases, I do know that um, you can be entered onto the specialist register. Yeah. Is there any age limitations on applying for programs or the GMC register? I'm not sure if they base it on age, but I think they probably base it more on competencies and skills and um qualities versus an age um but i, I can double check and and, and let yeah. you know i haven't come across anyone i've had to look online but um something we can always have a look into a bit more um, 
What's this next one? Uh, while you're just finding the next one, I just wanted to put um, a link into the chat actually about the nuclear medicine question. Um, so apologies, um, I, I was thinking more academic, um, but I have found some information about, about it. So I'll put that in the chat for the person who wanted to know uh, about it. It does have a lot of information there. Perfect. Next question, I'm a junior medical doctor. I took about a year off work from the mid 2020 to mid 2021 and then started working for another institution would I be considered as a uh, sorry would it be considered as a gap in my CV and can it affect any chances of getting a job so they took about think, a year off um you can take gaps in training um certainly uh, many doctors do, um, especially if they've completed the foundation program over here. Um, they can take, you know, a, a one or two years. Sometimes they take more. I think what happens is, is that if you take, if you reach a certain um, like threshold to say, for instance, it could be two years, then it might be considered <coughs> that your um, skills are essentially outdated. So it's difficult to answer that question. And it would be dependent on how long and what you're applying for and obviously who makes that decision and who says yes or no. Um, if you, for instance, if you're a GP, um, I think it's two years. You think you can take a sabbatical or career break for two years. I think anything longer than that, then you might have to undergo some retraining. Um, but from my experience, if you've taken one year or so, and if you are still working in clinical practice, then it's not necessarily a gap. Um, it could just be as additional experience. So it does depend also what you did in that time out if you were working for another institution was it clinical or was it unrelated um but it, you know it's very difficult to to give a straightforward yes or no to some of these questions perfect yeah next question is do you ensure a placement for PLAB exams do you help us find a seat because of COVID it is very difficult to find a seat these days So with the PLAB examination, um, we ha once I've been onto the website, I've seen that there is a quite a lot of seats available at the moment, but it is one of the things of when it comes to you guys applying for the PLAB exam, you'll have to see, the, see what the seat availability is like, and we can aid you in um, finding a seat and helping you out in them ways, yes. Let me just go to the next questions. Uh, Pam, uh, there are some more questions in the uh, Q&A uh, box. Oh, yes, I'm going to look at uh, Do we get a license within a year as a medical doctor and get the right to work in the UK as a licensed medical doctor? If you can complete your PLAB uh, 1 and PLAB 2, then yes. <laughs> Uh, as soon as you get your PLAB 1 and 2, then you can work in the UK as a medical doctor, yes. Is that correct, Patrice? Sorry, I'm trying to multitask as well, so <laughs> apologies <laughs> if I'm in and out. Um, could you just re repeat that? Yeah. I think, yeah. Do we get a licence within a year as a medical doctor and get the right to work in the UK as a licensed medical doctor? Um. Providing so, you, so, so you have to um, you have to obviously um, make an application, apply to the GMC, and you have to sit the PLAB one and PLAB two. So, I I don't know if it, it will be within a year. It depends on how long uh, it takes you to do the exams. I know there's a time frame. So when you do PLAB one, you have to do PLAB two within a certain time frame. Otherwise, it 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 just becomes redundant, I suppose. Yeah. And we've got. Does a specialist need to pass PLABS, PLAB test to practice in the UK as a specialist or is there a shortcut without the PLABS? I think that's a similar question to the previous ones. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find a link from the GMC website, which does talk about um, uh, if you are a specialist, how you can enter onto the speci specialty mm -hmm. register. So I'm just going to put that in the chat, which hopefully should help answer some of the questions. Yeah. Can we stay in London after our course? Does it mean that we get permanent England residence? Once the programme is completed, 
and you have got your plab one and plab two um, sorted, provided that you have a job with sponsorship, then yes, you can uh, go ahead and apply for permanent residence. Once you complete your exam, you do get an additional two years as a post-working visa, That's something the UK is granting at the moment. So you'll have a good two years to do your plab one, plab two, and also will aid you in getting your job sorted as well. So yeah, this is a route of getting a permanent residence in the UK. Next question. I have done two years training in internal medicine. What is the best pathway for me to apply for UK? And should I go for PLAB or MRCP as I'm already in the middle of my training in my country for internal medicine four year program and I have already completed two years? Dr. Patrice, do you know the answer to this one? um you can so so the gmc website is a very good source of information um it's a difficult one if you if you're already halfway through your training you could complete your training um or you could decide to uh sit the plab and then complete the training over here like i said if you've completed your training and you are a specialist in your country then you could potentially um I, obviously I can't you know no one can guarantee it depends on the GMC but potentially you could uh then enter into this onto the specialty register like we said before the, the common route is to take the PLAB exam so that you can work in the UK and obviously get a license to practice with the GMC I think that's that's how most doctors seem to do it yeah. even if they are a specialist um because there are so many differences um in the way things people do things um in the UK and, and abroad and I think the consensus from my experience and from speaking to IMGs and from what I've seen is that they do come over and do the PLAB and then um, then enter into the training pathway that way. Definitely, yeah. We've got another question. Can you get a dental licence after you take a dental programme from your college? If you complete one, of, well, we've got a program which is similar to the program that we're going through here. It's called Advanced General Dental Practice. If you complete that program, we'll give you all the groundwork that you require to then go on to complete um, an ORE examination with the GDC. So you can get that completed. Then, yes, you can get the license to practice as a dentist within the UK. Do we need IELTS exam and how much do we need in terms of scores? So with the programmes, we do require English language and we are looking at a score of 6.0 overall with no band marks under 5.0. I think a lot of the questions we're getting now are very similar in terms of once you've completed um, PLAB 1 and PLAB 2, can we get accepted as a specialist? You do have routes to become a specialist. Uh, completing the PLAB 1 and PLAB 2 will just get you the licence to uh, work as a medical professional in the UK. You will have to continue on to get the specialism statuses. Uh, can I comment on one matter, uh, Pam? Yes. Um, in, it's the English language test. Mm -hmm. um, to to join our program, uh, the MSc program, there is a required level of English. However, what is more important is your English level when you uh, when you register in the GMC or sit the PLAB exam. And the GMC accept either IELTS or uh, the OET, and it's perceived that the OET examination is an easier one. And within both programs, we prepare you to pass the OET or the PLAB exam or, or, or the IELTS exam, but more into the OET, the Occupational English Test, which is a, an easier and more focus on, on, on medical practice. Uh, so I hope that answered that question. To join the MSc, any MSc in the UK, you will need to have a certain level of English of IELTS. 
we do accept up to six in IELTS. So six in IELTS is fine to our programs, MSc programs. Thank you, Maha. We have another question. Is the 15,000 pound divided uh, or does it have to be delivered in one go? So with the 15,000, we do take an initial deposit of 6,000 and the remaining payment, we will split into three installments for you just to make it easier. If you do wish to pay all in one go, you certainly can make a full payment in one go. That's completely fine. Could you please give detail of the CESR slash CP route? Dr. Patrice, I think that one's for you. Sorry, I, I missed that one. <laughs> yeah, I think I've lost it now as well. Oh. Uh, C, I think it was CPR slash CP route. Could you give more information? Um, I'm not sure. Um, CPR. What does that stand for? I'm just trying to get the I'm just trying to get it back up so if I can find the question. Um, Are they talking about um emergency um like life support training or is this another pathway or here we go. Could you please give details of the C E S R slash C P route? Oh, I've sent the link in the chat. It probably has disappeared now, actually. <laughs> um, but if you go to the if you um, go to the GMC website, there is a dedicated page on there, and it does say that you have to make an application. Um, so everything you know is you have to apply and see what they say. And I think it takes about six months. Uh, might be a bit shorter. So you know, technically, if you, if you are obviously you know abroad, you could make submit your application and see what they say, and then make your decision. Um, based off of the outcome of the application. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a few questions asking uh, regarding specialism and how quick they can become a specialist. Would you say there is a timeline of how quick they can become a specialist or would you say it's generally based on um, how quick they can get examinations done and slots for examinations and stuff? Um, I think it's. I think it's a very difficult question to answer. I think it depends on a, a loads of different factors. Um, I just think it's just it's just a difficult one to answer. To be honest, I can't remember the time frame. <laughs> every every case is so different. Yeah. Um, it could take a year. It could take longer. It could be much shorter. Um, it's just it's just one that you can't really give a specific answer to, unfortunately. Uh huh. No problem. Let me just see any more questions we have. Yeah, a lot more questions are how long will it take to complete the plan one and two completely approximately? That's fine. Okay, but I believe that we've gone through a lot of the questions. What we can do is we've got all these questions that will be saved. Uh, we can individually give everyone a response or you can send us a quick email with any questions that have not been answered through here. And then we can give you a more detailed response if you wish. Yeah, sure. Um, also, uh, they can check in our website. Um, Definitely, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I am sharing here. Uh, all the questions will be translated to Turkish um, and answers. Uh, if Turkish colleagues uh, would like to check our page, I am sharing in the chat box. Excuse me, I wrote <laughs> again. The second one is correct. Okay, thank you very much. Mahir, can we finish? Yes, hi. Um, do, do you think there's any other question uh, now, um, uh, Balant, Jakob? I'll uh, be okay with this. Uh, I think we answered most of them. So uh, we recorded all of them, then uh, we'll uh, answer. 
Okay, wonderful. Yeah. So you can send uh, emails to the uh, candidates. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. I'm I'm happy to finish here. Uh, thank you for attending this uh, short webinar about uh, uh, basically our two programs, the uh, Life and, and Work in the UK for Doctors, which is six months program, and the MSc in Advanced General Medical Practice, which is starting in September next year. Um, I, I will be uh, coming to, hopefully, to Istanbul at the end of the month, and that is uh, to uh, meet with potential doctors and potential dentists who would like to come to the UK, study and work. So, mm -hmm. uh, you get full details from um, the team and um, hopefully I will see you there. Thank you very much for organizing this. Okay, thank you very much for- Thank you very me. much for all participants and Professor Mahir El Masri and Pam and Dr. Patrice. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.